Bandit is a character that we commonly see having fun, being carefree, and being constantly attentive to his children. However, in one of the newer episodes of Bluey, Stickbird, we only see the opposite, leading many fans to worry about what's causing him to feel this way, even to the point that he ignores his family time and time again. Dad. Dad. Oh, sorry, mate. What was that? What's seen through Bandit in this episode is something we can all relate to, since there's been a point in everyone's life where no matter how hard you try or how fun everything is around you, you can't help but think or stress over what's been bothering you. Due to the extreme difficulty of dealing with negative emotions that are portrayed accurately through Bandit and even Bingo, this episode is one that causes many to become emotional. But this episode teaches an extremely valuable skill to learn in life, and it's all about how to manage these negative emotions. I started talking about Bluey due to my history of working with kids in a therapeutic setting which has inspired me to start the series. And the way they show management of emotions is actually something taught by mental health professionals as a way to assist with figuring out all emotions through a form of visualization as well as association with where these emotions show up in your body. You just feel where it is and go get it! But before we get into the upset and sticks of the video, Sit! don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You have no idea how much helps me out to get these videos out to more fans like you. And let's discuss what's going on with Bandit. Dad, race me to that stick! Dad. Dad! Oh, sorry, mate. What was that? Let it go, babe. You're missing all this. I'm trying. You'll be happy here. You've got lots of other birds around. Come on, Cookie! <laughs> oh no. They broke stick bird. I know. I really like stick bird. Yeah, me too. He was beautiful. But when you put something beautiful out into the world, it's no longer yours, really. You've got all that upset and angry in your hands. What do I do with it? Well, what do you do with something you don't want anymore? Here I come! To start, this episode subtly foreshadows the confusing theme within by being the first episode to show the title card before it actually starts. The reason why this is important is that normally Bluey episodes are structured with a prelude, the title card, and then the rest of the episode. Okay, family meeting over! Which is no doubt intentional, because if you keep a close eye on Bandit, you can clearly see something is amiss. Even as they walk into the starting scene, you can see Bandit has a frown on his face and only smiles when he notices Chili is looking at him. And for the remainder of this episode, as the family around him has fun, we are only going to see Bandit dwell deeper and deeper into his own thoughts. As the episode goes on, it's important to remember that a large majority of the Bluey episodes are created through the creator's own experiences in his life, almost being a self-insert through the character Bandit. So a lot of time when we see the family playing games or just showcasing valuable life lessons, it's an extension of Joe Brum himself. If you had the chance to watch the Behind Bluey podcast for this episode, he mentions a yeah. lot of personal thoughts on yeah. how difficult it is to be in the moment. You're missing all this. Even during times when the main focus should be on having fun with your family. So it's not surprising to see this make its way into an episode eventually. But it's very emotionally impactful when you consider how much subconscious meaning this episode probably has for the creator, making it no surprise why this episode can stir up a multitude of feelings. Are you okay, Dad? Yeah, mate. I'm okay. As we witness Bandit's abnormal behavior. We eventually move on to a seemingly minor part of the episode where Bluey and Bingo find a stick and test okay. how far they can throw it. Woo! with little success. Who taught you kids how to throw? Chili attempts to talk to Bandit. You wanna handle this? But his mind is still elsewhere hey. and takes Chili having to quite literally snap him out of his trance to even get a small response from him. Oh, sorry, what? Nothing. Before this, all it took to get his attention and a smile from him was a glance from Chili. But now, even when being confronted head on, Bandit is absent minded on what's happening, refusing to even smile as he blankly stares at Chili getting up. Now, as mentioned before, the throwing part may seem minor, and the kids even ask Chili if this is a skill they will even need. Do we need to throw things really far? 
Sometimes. But despite its seemingly unimportance, it serves as an excellent foreshadowing tool for an extremely impactful scene near the end. Bingo determined to learn the skill, she sets off to find better sticks as she tries to have fun with her father, where we get a sad scene that I'm sure we can all resonate with. Dad! Oh, sorry mate, what was that? Let it go babe, you're missing all this. I'm trying. In life, there's many moments we'll all find ourselves not being able to control a thought or a feeling. Mackenzie? And in those moments, it can cause a sense of dissociation from all the fun surrounding you. Unable to fully get your mind off of what's stressing you out. And what's really hard about the scene in particular is the way that Bandit says, I'm trying with a really worried expression. Despite his seemingly lack of attention for everything, he seems fully aware of the negatives his actions are causing through the tone of his voice, which closely matches the actions many people under stress deal with. A lot of the time when dealing with stress, it's very difficult to be able to stop the mental tension going on within your head, even when you're aware on how it's affecting the ones around you. Nothing. In times like these, it can cause the individual to almost distance themselves away from others in an effort to find a solution in their mind, usually leading into a spiral of thoughts that don't necessarily help with anything. And we can see Bandit doing exactly this throughout the entire episode via physically distancing, but also mentally distancing by ignoring the ones around him. There are multiple ways to get around this feeling, but as mentioned before, Are you okay? There's a very specific technique that the studio teaches the audience that works very well for certain individuals. I'm sure many of you would love to experience it in its full glory by watching the episode yourself. However, this is an episode that is exclusive to those in Australia, oh. unless you have a way to bypass location-based restrictions, which is why I'm happy to say this video was sponsored by Atlas VPN. With Atlas VPN, it's very easy to watch any Bluey episode that you like. All it takes is just press one button to connect to Australian-based servers, and then go to the streaming website ABC and type in Bluey on the top right there. You can see all the episodes that aren't in your region. And with that, you'll be easily able to access Stickbird from there. Atlas VPN is also the best VPN deal in the market. It stops ads and malware. It allows you to keep your Google searches in private and protects an unlimited amount of devices while also allowing you to save coin while you're online shopping. Currently, there's a special deal for the summer that allows you to get Atlas VPN for $1.83 per month plus three extra months for free with a 30 day money back guarantee. And you can easily access this deal by going down below and checking out the comment and description for the link for the special offer. And as we switch back to an understandably confused Bingo asking, What are you trying? Bandit says, Nothing. As he briefly goes back to his normal mode, chasing after right, Bingo to find the perfect stick, where they find a rather unique looking stick. It looks like a bird's head! Prompting Bingo to want to make a stick bird, which is inspired by Joe Brum's own adventure of making a stick bird with his daughter. Hooray! But as they finish up their creation, we notice Bandit once again distancing himself and not hearing Bingo's initial attempt. Dad as she calls for him. Dad. Eventually Bandit hears her and turns around and approaches Bingo with almost no emotion, as Bingo suggests that they find another stick for the game. Oh, why? Cause we can't for a stick bird's head. Let's but Bandit it. taking Let's initiative this time <laughs> with a race to the edge of the beach. And if you look closely during the zoom out shot, you can see the reoccurring long dog easter egg of this episode amongst the logs. And as their focus gathering sticks, three kids run across the beach doing their own race just like Bandit and Bingo have been doing throughout the entire episode as they run past the stick bird, with the music stopping as this happens. Stick! <laughs> oh no. as the music comes back in with a slow piano piece, really conveying the emotions Bingo is feeling. They broke stick bird. I know. Why would they do that? Well, they probably just wanted the stick. They wouldn't have known we just made it. And once again, I want to remind everyone how much personal emotion this episode has from the creator before we go into the next key line. Because as Bingo and Bandit lament over Stickbird being destroyed, I really like Stickbird. We get a sentence that holds so much meaning for anyone who has created something, especially Joe Brum. Yeah, me too. He was beautiful. But when you put something beautiful out into the world, it's no longer yours, really. 
I'm usually the type of person, as you know, who analyzes everything that can be analyzed, but it goes on a completely different level when it's for an individual's feelings. Which makes this line extremely emotional and impactful for me once I fully understand what it means for Joe. When this episode was in production, a lot of the crew members expressed their concern for Joe when they got to this part. Joe Brum during the podcast for this episode mentions how there was notes for particular episodes that were given to him to essentially change the vision of his original work for certain episodes, and goes on to mention how some episodes work and some don't for what gets allowed into the final production. And when he does talk about this, I always notice a disconnect with the words he says and the emotions he's conveying during this explanation during the podcast. When a disconnect like this occurs, it's usually due to a feeling of sorrow or rage. During this, he also talks about how he overthinks things often, says that his wife would often tell him to stop overthinking things because he would be missing out on what's happening around him. You're missing all this. Just like what we see from Bandit in this episode. I'm trying. Now that we understand a little on the thought process behind the episode, I think it's fair to try our best to explore on what Bandit might be stressing about during this entire episode. However, I'm going to keep it brief because of a little thing I'll explain in a bit, but the most popular assumptions are Bandit might have gotten news about his father getting ill, which explains why we haven't seen Grandpa Bob in nearly 100 episodes after his first appearance. Good night, Grandpa Bob, wherever you are. Which I admit would be a very telling reason for his behavior, because if we decide to take it a step further, you could say the three kids racing on the beach are meant to represent Bandit and his siblings during their youth, since they are wearing 80s colored hats, as well as having one parent present on the beach, matching exactly what we see in fairy tales with his family vacation on the beach. There's a lot more I could say on this, but let's move on to the second popular assumption, which is that Bandit being an archaeologist found a new discovery that he didn't want to be disturbed. And once word got out on the discovery, it wasn't properly preserved, marrying exactly what Bingo was going through with her stick bird, and of course the iconic line. When you put something beautiful out into the world, it's no longer yours really. Now even when making this episode, everyone in the studio wanted to know why Bandit was really upset and even asked Joe multiple times. However, Joe chose to outright say that the reason behind Bandit's behavior doesn't matter at all. Like many episodes within the show, there's a certain beauty and vagueness that is often captured with the messages the studio portrays for Lily. And what that essentially means is that they purposely left it ambiguous to allow just about anyone to connect with Bandit here. Doing so allows us to make up our own interpretation on what's occurring, making it resonate with many in a myriad of different ways because frankly, what? we as humans are all going to deal with a situation that leads us to a point that no matter how hard we try, just like Bandit, we can't seem to get our mind off of what's bothering us. But what's taught next is the importance of expressing these emotions as well as how to manage them when it seems almost impossible to do so. After Stickbird being destroyed, Bandit continues to gather sticks for Bingo as she mirrors the same behavior Bandit was doing earlier. As we switch over to Bluey finally getting her throw good enough to hit her mark, causing her and Chili to celebrate. Bandit still trying to cheer up Bingo attempts to find a new head to recreate Stickbird and even says the same exact thing to her. Come on, cheer up Bingo, you're missing all this. That his wife said to him earlier. You're missing all this. With Bluey excited to tell them of her success, she encourages Bingo to race her back so she can show her sister, but this time Bingo refuses to race due to how she feels. I'm upset and angry. Where we finally get to the part that I keep referencing from managing your emotions. I can show you a trick my buddy Mia taught me if you like. Okay, so you have to collect all the upset and all the angry. What's really stellar about the scene is as Bluey is describing this to Bingo, she basically has the same reaction just about anyone has when learning about this. How do I collect upset and angry? Now I normally don't describe the emotions exactly as this, but to put it bluntly, there's a thing called interoception therapy. That is basically what Bluey is describing. Now this differs on each individual, but some common ones is that nervousness shows up on the belly while anger can show up on the ears. But what's important is to basically listen to what your body is trying to tell you. And that is shown excellently in this next scene. You just feel where it is and go get it. Hmm, there's usually some in your belly or your neck. And always remember to check your ears. Okay. 
<laughs> now technically what's happening on screen is visualization. They're visualizing their emotions as something they can pluck from their body. And while interoception can be done in multiple different ways, they did it in a very fun way that hopefully encourages others to try it. But what always gets me laughing is when they have the emotions in their hands and this happens. Now you've got all that upset and angry in your hands. What do I do with it? Well, what do you do with something you don't want anymore? Uh, give it to you? Well, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> then what do I do with it? And once again, the music transforms into this Just beautiful melancholy piano piece oh. as Bluey describes uh -huh. the Let final step, say. creating this, this equally really beautiful far. scene. Stand sideways like on a skateboard. Bend your knees. Yep, get comfy. That's good. And with this arm, and I will say that this isn't something that technically works for everyone. I don't want to give the false premise that you can be just like bingo here and throw all your worries into the sea. But those who are interested in possibly trying, it's important for me to say that this is technically a skill. Some may have even learned this during mindfulness, which is a whole nother topic. But like all skills, it's something that takes time to learn and you'll need to find ways to make it work for you. Some people imagine boxes where they put their emotions in properly labeled boxes, some people just imagine the emotions disappearing, and some people <laughs> like to imagine them being destroyed with a baseball bat in like a rage room. But just being able to recognize what emotion you're feeling and where they show up on your body can be enough to help you say, hey, I realize I'm feeling stressed out, and then connecting that emotion to an action that is meant to make you feel better. Whether it's just doing something you enjoy like reading a book, or even through visualization like we see the family do here, and eventually Bandit, because as the kids race back to mom, Bandit goes back into his trance as he looks off into the distance once again with the same piano that accompanied the earlier scenes, as we get a perfect finale to this amazing episode. Now, as in tradition, we're at the part of the deep dive where we'll be going over all the references and easter eggs, so let's get right into it. As mentioned before, this adventure was made in reference to Joe's own experience making a stick bird with her daughter, even with the scene with the kids ruining Bingo's stick bird. But when Bingo says, They're my rivals. The original thing that Joe's daughter said was, I want them to explode. The ending scene with Bandit throwing away his emotions is mentioned to have taken many hours to complete due to the many moving pieces and camera work within, but it was also designed as a homage to the shots in Happy Gilmore of the golf balls flying into the distance. Thanks to Meme Machine for teaching me that one. At the end of the episode, Bluey mentioned she learned the emotion trick from her buddy Mia. My buddy Mia taught me if you like which is call back to the episode Barky Boats. But at the start, there is another call back to the episode with Bluey doing a cartwheel, which was something she was excited to show Mia, and Mia seems to be an expert in this. Wow, you've been practicing. Watch mine. Whoa. There's another long dog in this episode besides the one among the sticks, which is actually seen in the first scene in this little pool disguised as a hermit crab. Now this next part technically isn't an easter egg, but after throwing the sticks with Chili, I love how much Bluey winds up her grab for the stick. It's such a cute, subtle piece of animation in the episode. The beach location is based off of... I might mispronounce this, Kuramundi, which is a beach or an inlet on the sunny coast, and the design team made the sand more yellow to make it look more distinct compared to the other beach episode, as well as the ocean being a different color. I can't find an image for the concept art for this, so you're gonna have to use your imagination, but the original stick bird design in this episode was a lot more spiky and scary, and they changed it for obvious reasons. Oh boy. The animation team had a conversation on if the fish at the end should smile or look sad on what they wanted to convey with the fish. Jokingly, they decided that the fish is just confused, perhaps as a subtle nod to how confused the studio was trying to figure out why Bandit was upset. And finally, in the end credits, it credits the classical German composer Botch because the background music is heavily inspired by his song, Jesus Joy of Man's Desirable. Yeah! That's all the easter eggs I could find, however, if there's an easter eggs you buddies found that I missed, please tell me in the comments down below. 
Overall, I adore the studio choosing to tackle this idea within the show because it's not something that is commonly addressed in society. A lot of times we're told not to feel negative emotions at all, so encouraging the audience to not only feel those emotions by identifying where they show up on your body, but also a technique to manage them is something I really enjoyed seeing as well as the overall idea of how important it is to live in the moment because of how easy it is to start overthinking things like work, health, or anything really. Come on, cheer up, Bingo. You're missing all this. And demonstrating how quick you can switch back to this overthinking state when you aren't being interacted with. I understand a fair bit of the community thinks that this episode falls a bit flat, so I'm interested to hear what you buddies think about the episode, especially if anybody's opinions have changed after hearing how personal this episode is for Joe. And please join me next time as we analyze everything Bluey. I'm currently juggling a few video ideas with my Calypso best teacher in media, as well as the musical mastery of Bluey and countless deep dives for individual episodes. So make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss or air any new video that I make. At this point, I'm going to be showing the amazing fan art sent to me by the many talented artists within the community with their Twitter handles on the bottom left. So you can check out the rest of their awesome work. And the first one is from Sam out. Now, I feel like this needs a bit of a backstory to like fully describe, but to briefly describe it is that there was a quote unquote bluey Hunger Games, which was like a automatically RNG based thing where a bunch of people in the community just put in their names and then they were like randomly assigned us to districts. And <laughs> this shows a bunch of bluey OCs, including mine. And if you look closely, I'm actually holding a rock. I'm gonna show another fan art by them with me throwing a rock at their head and that's because in the hunger game i'm pretty sure at one day i threw a rock at their head i think they escaped i don't remember fully there was like a ton of fan art for the hunger game stuff including this other one from jazzy which both of these artists draw incredible things the original piece i'm showing here i really love because whenever there's a bunch of bluey peeps that i know in a drawing with me it feels very special because it feels like bridge of the hall hanging out and that means a lot to me this next one is by the ever talented Pepper. Now, once again, another explanation. It was just drawing a bunch of different Peeps OCs with him just smooching them, which is very, very cute. I love that a lot. But if we move on to the next piece, we have Kimmy with me just standing there looking all cool with a peace sign with some awesome little stars in the background. I always enjoy their art style, so it meant a lot for them to suddenly spring this on me. And I feel like I say this a lot. <laughs> But I'm being honest, I, I really do enjoy how some people draw their lines and I really like how curvy the head tough as well as the ears look in this. This one is by Adam Likes Bears. Now this one has a whole story on the right that you can pause and read, but basically it's this awesome illustration with amazing colors. I just love the uh, the dreamlike colors on the side with Jack and Rusty floating in space and my character also floating in space here. It's just so, so cool. It, I'm not even sure how to fully describe it, but I love how the glasses are floating in space off in the distance there. And anything with Jack and Rusty really gets me giddy. <laughs> so this was really, really special for me. This next one is by Meme Machine. Now I really love this because they mentioned that they only started drawing just about two days ago. So it means a lot that they wanted to draw something special for me and essentially practice their skills by drawing my character. So that was very special for me. And finally, this one is from Vib. Now, Vib just drew me floating in space. I really like their art style because it essentially mimics the escape art style that we see in the show. And I really, really love space. And I just love the little expression they show on my face. It looks like I'm having a lot of fun just going yay. But I just want to say thank you for each artist for sending me their incredible work. It always makes my day when I get one of these. And if you'd like to also share your art with me, please send me your art via a DM on Twitter or I suppose it's called X now over on my Twitter over here. And thank you for everyone who's watching and supporting me on the daily to keep working on this passion project of mine. I feel truly blessed to even be granted this opportunity, so thank you from the bottom of my heart, as well as the members who support me as little as $5 bucks a month, which are Claire Voins, Rick and Glacius, Mr. Kitty, and Zach. And if you'd also like to support me, consider clicking the link in the comments or description or on the top right to become a member. The more members I have, the closer I get to becoming full time and don't forget to use the link down below for the special summertime deal for Atlas VPN so you can watch all those new Bluey episodes including this one and as always don't forget to like comment subscribe and I hope y'all have a great day <laughs> bye bye
And the last shall be First to immerse in a pass out heat Facing him up with a moxie melt Till he woke up drowning in tchotchke hell Born a cave with a torch on a wall Then a window arrangement of porcelain doll